Assalamu alaikum, Sayyida Thuba Raza here. Dear students, hope you're all well and doing great. The video on the topic, Arthropores, the Blueprint for Success. This contains instructive and educational content that is both shareable and easy to understand. Okay, moving towards topic. First of all, I would like to give a little introduction of the arthropores. What are arthropores? The term literally means jointed legs. Means all the arthropores have jointed legs. Now, what are about their species? They consist of 1 million described species and 30 to 35 million undescribed species. They are a diverse form of group. They show a variety within the species and among the species and widely distributed in the various tremendous areas of the world, including Pakistan. Uh, I've shown picture in which you would like to share, uh, see the crayfish, lobster, spider, mice, scorpion, and insects. These are quite some examples of arthropods. Now, why are arthropods successful? Why they are known as the blueprint for success? Here, I've shown some journal characters of arthropods. And if we talk about their journal character, why are they so successful? They show the phenomena of metamorphosis. They show the phenomena of metamerism. They have open circulatory system, a complete digestive tract. Of course, they show the important ectasis and molting. They have a ventral nervous system, jointed appendages. Their exoskeleton is also quite important. And they have a triplo blood plastic protosome and a bilateral symmetry. These are some general characters, but far apart these things, why they are so, so, so successful? They are considered so successful due to their complex behavior, compound eyes and segmentization. Okay. This is all about why they are so successful. And I would like to talk about the metamerism and segmentization process. Segmental arrangement of body parts of animal is called as metamerism. The specializations of body region in a metameric animal is called as tegmatization. Always remember that tegmatization is best developed in arthropods. Body regions are called as tegma, which are specialized for feeding locomotion and many visceral functions for example like thorax abdomen and head etc okay this is about the important phenomena like metamerism and tegmatization i would like to talk about their exoskeleton their exoskeleton is external they have a jointed exoskeleton sometimes also called as cuticle what is the function of exoskeleton Exoskeleton provides them protection, support. It also provides them the attachment points for the muscle movement and also prevents them from water loss. Arthropods have the exoskeleton, which is usually composed of lipids, proteins, and chitin. As far as their structure is concerned, they consist of two layers. One is apicuticle and the other one is procuticle. The apicuticle, this is outermost, waxy and impermeable to water, bacteria and many pesticides. The procuticle is deeper, thicker layer of chitin and protein. This was about the exoskeleton. I would like to show the modifications of exoskeleton here in the picture. You can see how they are modified. The modifications usually include many sensory receptors, which are called as sensor and the form of packs, bristles, and lenses. But uh, they also contain the modification which allow them for the gas exchange. Seclerotization is an important process in arthropods. Now, what is the seclerotization process? This is the hardening process in which the hardening of procuticle occurs. Now, why the hardening of procuticle occurs? Of course, it provides the armor like protection and help them to live and grow in their confines. This is about the hardening process <clears throat> and the modifications. But now, I would like to talk about the most important phenomena. Otherwise, arthropods are incomplete. This is ecdysis. Ecdysis is shedding of exoskeleton for the growth purpose. Until there is no ecdysis, there is no growth and they won't be able to grow. 
Agdaisi shows some events. In the first events, enzymes secreted from the hypodermal glands will start digesting the old procuticle to separate the hypodermis and the exoskeleton. And in second event, the no new procuticle and the epicuticle are secreted. And then in third event, the old exoskeleton is placed open along the predetermined ectodermal lines and secrete the additional epicuticle. And of course, in last event, the secularization process occurs, which you already know is a hardening process, in which the deposition of calcium carbonate occurs. This is how they show the phenomena of their growth and this allow them to grow in their confines. Now, I would like to move on the types of arthropods. First of all, I would like to discuss the first type. The first type is trilobite. Trilobites is the ancient family of marine arthropods. They went extinct during the Permian Triassic extinction even and today they are known to us mostly through fossils like uh, I've shown some pictures below and uh, they usually live on the ocean floor. Now I would like to move on second type which is Caliceres. Caliceres has two tegmata. Number one, the prosoma or cephalothorax. The cephalothorax is sensory feeding and locomotor tegma. It usually bears the eyes, but unlike other arthropods, they have never have antennae. Pair of appendages attached to the prosoma, the first pair of calicerophor, pincer like, or calicerate, and the most often used in feeding. They may also be specialized as holofangs for a variety of other functions. The second pair, called pedipops, are usually sensitive but may also be used in feeding, locomotion, reproduction. The paired walking legs follow the pedipops. Posterior to prosoma is opestosoma. Opestosoma, which contain digestive, reproductive, excretory, and respiratory organs. I've given some of the few examples like spiders, scorpions, sea spiders, horseshoe crab. These are all calistrates. Now I would like to move on miripods. What are miripods? The term miripods mean many legs. So it is not surprising the centipedes, millipedes, and the centipedes, many other leg, leg creatures are the part of this family. Miripods can have anywhere from less than 10 legs or over to 750. They seem excessive, but they're actually not, I think. Miripods are typically found in forests. Uh, and the ecosystem where there's a lot of decaying plants and animals where they can feed on. Now, the third type, crustaceans. Crustaceans, these are aquatic arthropods that include the lobsters, crabs, shrimp, crayfish, and barnacles. There are also some wood lice that are all known as pillbugs. Wood lice live on dry land and found in environments such as gardens, forests, where they survive by eating decaying plant and animal material. Adult barnacles develop hard shell that stick them to their surroundings. Now, the four, fifth one is hexapod. Hexapod is quietly important. Uh, I would like to share some characters of the class hexapoda in which there are many hexapods. The body of an insect is divided into three tegmata, head, thorax, and abdomen. The head bears a single pair of antenna. The mouth bars compound eyes are 0 to 2 or 3 oscilli. The thorax consists of three segments, the form anterior, posterior, prothorax, and mesothorax, and the metathorax. One pair of legs attaches along the ventral margin of each thoracic segment and a pair of wings when present attaches to the dorsal lateral margin of the mesothorax and metathorax. Wings are thickened, hollow veins of increased strength. The thorax also contains the two pairs of spiracles which are openings of the tracheal system. Most of the insects have 10 to 11 abdominal segments each of which has a lateral fold in which the exoskeleton that allows the abdomen to expand when the insect has gored itself or when it is full of mature eggs. Each abdominal segment has a pair of spiracles also present in the genital structure which are used during the copulation and egg deposition and the sensory structures called as serrae. 
The gills are present on abdominal segments of certain immature aquatic insects. Hexapods mainly consist on insects and of course insects have six legs, six legs along them with them. I've talked about the various types of uh, insects and also different types of arthropods which were under the various classes like Arachnida, uh, Melacostraca. These were under the classes and now I would like to talk about some of their internal functions. One of them is nervous system of arthropods. The nervous system of arthropods, they have a dorsal brain ventral ganglionated longitudinal nerve cord the nerves are lateral these system is usually similar to annelid worms if we talk about the annelids they also possess the same nervous system as do the arthropods okay i've shown the pictures where you can easily see the clear nervous system of the arthropods where you can see the brain nerve cord and segmental ganglia inside the circulatory system of arthropods. Circulatory system, they have an open circulatory system. And what does open circulatory system mean? Open circulatory system means that blood fills the body cavity of an animal. In the hemocele, hemocele is the cavity of arthropods. And the leftover space is instead filled with the blood which covers other organs keeping them barred in blood. This is this was all about the circulatory system, which is also shown in the pictures given below. Thank you so much. This was all my presentation along the topic arthropods and their wide ranging capabilities due to which they are mostly successful in our living areas, even in Pakistan. This was all about the presentation. I've talked about the arthropods blueprint for success. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.